Hi everyone. Recently, I seem to have encountered a lot of people who are looking to get friends and family into board gaming. In particular, the younger generation, who parents seem obsessed with for some reason. One thing they seem to want more than anything is a way to get these mini humans off their screens and staring at some other flat, colourful surface, like a deck of cards or a game board. But other than providing a fortnightless experience, which should be enough, what other benefits are there to the hobby? What follows is by no means an exhaustive list of the benefits of board gaming, but it does contain a few salient points that I feel are worth mentioning. Socialising can be a real drag for some people, particularly those loud boisterous introverts who just won't shut up about how quiet and isolated they are. I know, because I am one. Contrary to popular belief, introverts are not antisocial, at least not all the time. We're not the darkness to extroverts' light. It's a vast spectrum that varies throughout one's life, not a coin that's flipped at birth. You've probably heard about extroverts gaining energy from socialising, while introverts expend energy to do the same. It's a pretty fair analogy most of the time, but there are a lot of factors that can alter that. Mood, health, how busy someone's been at work, how much social time they've had recently. That social meter's a fickle beast. I love hanging out with a few good mates, laughing, talking, playing games, but then I quickly get over it and I'm good for like a week or so. It doesn't mean I don't want to talk to people, I just don't need to do it all the time, and doing too much of it can leave me feeling drained and frustrated. And if you happen to catch me during a time where I'm running on empty, you could be forgiven for thinking I'm antisocial. But I understand the need for my kids to learn how to socialise, even when I don't feel like it. They need to figure out how to conduct themselves around others, and you can see where this is going. No, not boarding school. Although, the social benefits of board gaming are plentiful, and whether it's a small gathering of friends or a large gaming event encompassing dozens or even hundreds of people, forming those connections with others who share a common interest is one of the most rewarding aspects of gaming. Learning to adapt to the vibe of a new group takes some skill, and like Liam Neeson, these are a particular set of skills gained over a lifetime. But like any skill, they can get a little rusty, so you need to trot them out for a stretch every now and then. Social deduction and hidden trader games like Werewolf or Secret Hitler can be a brilliant way for people to learn the subtleties of human communication, and having a great time while doing it. Regular social interaction keeps us happier, healthier, and better able to get along with others, and social gaming is perfect for this. Board game can be a great way to explore and enhance individual values. Role playing games are especially good for this, as the characters often have to face moral dilemmas that they're forced to talk their way out of rather than fight. The first time I introduced my son to Dungeons and Dragons, his character was shopping in a market square when a group of giant spiders started marching into town. He didn't hesitate, he drew his sword and attacked the first spider. And the look on his face when that spider squealed and started speaking was really funny. The spider informed him that the villagers had been attacking them and stealing their silk to make their wares. The spiders had come to town to negotiate a peace and find some kind of mutually beneficial solution. This became an important learning moment for him. So much so that every enemy he encountered after that he would try to talk to them first and only attack as a last resort. He learned that not everything is as it appears. That the spiders, despite being monstrous, were actually the victims, while the friendly and well-dressed townsfolk actually harboured a dark side of their own. Asking questions and getting both sides of the story was now his first instinct. D&D has even been used to great success by inmates in prison systems around the world, by allowing them to address their impulsivity and problem thinking, and overcome racial and violent tendencies to find more rewarding, peaceful solutions. Unlikely friendships have even formed as a result. Placing people in situations where they're forced to make hard choices can help them learn a lot about themselves and others, and I think that's really worth something. I suck at math, and it's something I've tried to address in the past, but I've come to accept I really just don't have a knack for numbers. Yet, I have no trouble figuring out probabilities and statistical likelihoods when it comes to board gaming. Reading, on the other hand, is something I greatly enjoy when I get the time to do it. Games like Tainted Grail and Sleeping Gods make for great storytelling opportunities, and allow me to explore an alternative way of experiencing a compelling narrative. Younger players can stretch their literacy and numeracy muscles by way of simple tasks, such as reading the text on a card, or adding up their score at the end of the game, which can really help young learners. They're engaging both hemispheres of the brain while gaming, and they're learning without feeling like they're being taught. Gaming helps them to explore knowledge contextually rather than as a series of abstract equations in a textbook, 
They're applying their knowledge to a situation which makes sense to them. There are a ton of games out there that help with spelling, reading, and mathematics. Bananagrams, for example, is a great way for kids to get their heads around letter sounds and combinations. And pretty much any game where you're rolling dice or adding up a score can help with their math skills. Without too much effort, kids will soon find themselves applying these skills without even realizing it. When was the last time you put your phone or computer aside and took a moment to just sit and breathe? This fast-paced world we live in doesn't often allow us the luxury of doing nothing. And those rare times that we do, we're often made to feel guilty about it. My favorite aspect of board gaming is that it allows me to focus on a singular task, giving it my full undivided attention. The ability to clear my head and put my troubles aside for a moment is always welcome. And to that end, games like Viticulture, Wingspan, and Tokaido are ideally suited to this. These are games that don't contain the horror of Cthulhu, the stress of social deduction, or the violence of a zombie horde. I could put on some relaxing tunes, kick back and engage in some gentle winemaking, imagining myself walking through the sun-dappled grapevines, or perhaps surrounding myself with the sound of bird songs as I try to catch sight of a duck-billed batarang. I don't know all the bird names, but I'm sure that's one. The skill of mindfulness, slowing down and taking time to clear your mind, has immense physical, mental, and emotional health benefits. And like a typical Mary Sue, this is yet another thing the board game hobby does so well. In our technological age, conditions like repetitive strain injury and carpal tunnel syndrome are becoming more common. We love our devices, but they're not always doing us a lot of good physically. Getting back to a more analog experience can allow for a variety of movement, allowing our hands and wrists to remain supple and retain a full range of motion. Games like Crokinole, Jenga, and Clask can aid in hand-eye coordination and improve manual dexterity. This doesn't just help kids. Almost anyone can improve their fine motor skills through board gaming. Even something as simple as learning how to shuffle cards or fan them out in your hand can be immensely beneficial. For someone who plays as many games as I do, I am terrible, like shockingly bad at Shuffling cards. It's a mess. I just like, I just move them around. Just that. Shuffle. Done. Learning to cope in life can be hard. The world can be a cruel, scary place. But learning to problem solve and make good decisions can reduce stress and help a person to feel more empowered and in control of their own lives. But how can games help us to solve problems effectively? My favorite genre of game for practicing decision making is worker placement. Games like Lords of Waterdeep and Architects of the West Kingdom present you with options. And I like to think of those options as small stepping stones along my way to solving a problem. The problem here being, I need to win the game. Breaking down what seems like an insurmountable problem into small achievable steps can make the entire process more manageable. And achieving these smaller goals triggers that sense of reward, releasing all those little endorphins that allow you to go from success to success until you just feel like one giant success machine. But, good or bad, decisions always have consequences. And it may be that you ended up doing everything right and still didn't meet with success. It doesn't mean you were wrong to try. But now, you must face the consequences of your actions, and for some, they can be a bitter pill to swallow. The very first lesson I taught each of my kids when getting them into board games was how to win and lose well. No one wants to play with a sore loser. I've played games with people who clearly never learned how to win or lose gracefully. And as such, those people weren't invited to our table again. Being humble in victory and gracious in defeat can inform others of the quality of your character. Learning to deal with strong emotions, not losing your temper, and learning to cope with adversity are important life skills. As such, I tend to subscribe to Wheaton's Law. Don't be a dick. Covers a lot of ground. So, those are my inane ramblings. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the benefits of board gaming. Please do subscribe, give a like if you feel it's deserved, and I do look forward to reading your comments here, or you can chat with myself and others over on the Game Kings Gamers Facebook group. Hope to see you there. The link is in the description below. In the meantime guys, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.